Hello and welcome to the next video tutorial. It's been a while since I recorded the last one and I received a very interesting question. It was about the marginal means and how can one calculate marginal means within SPSS. And I responded to the command that actually we use a different software to calculate marginal means. And in this video I want to show you what you can do in SPSS and what you can do in Stata and how you can do it in Stata. So for this reason, I have a pretty new data collected here. The data is now being prepared to be published. That is why I cannot tell you a lot about this data. But what we need to know is this is a discrete choice experiment. And we have here the attribute. We take only one attribute, the first one. It is called transparency. And we also have another scale that we have here. That is the scalable attribute. It is the time investment. Or, uh, sorry, it is the income reduction. And I want to show you what you would usually do in SPSS, and then I'll show you what you can also do in Stata and what you can do in SPSS. So first we go to Analyze. We make a binary logistic, logistic regression. You don't see it on the second screen, but here we have the variables and we define our independent variables that are transparency. We take only four of them, we don't want to test all of them. Our dependent variable is the final decision. And income reduction, I also take it here in order to see what's going to happen. So we now click on OK to have to obtain the first results that you would usually have. And here we have them. We go to the variables and equation and you see we have some significance levels. And actually it seems that transparency 4 is the most desired one because all other options regarding transparency are not as regarded as the transparency 4. So the levels for the attribute transparency, they are kind of 1, 2 and 3. They are less preferred than the transparency 4. We see it by these numbers. They are all lower than 1. And exponential b in this event represents, represents the odds ratio, it means the likelihood that somebody is going to prefer this option. So if they see the option 4 and option 3, they will most likely prefer the option 4. And the question is, of course, in how much they will prefer it. So it would be twice as preferred as option 3 or three times, because if it is below the 1, it's a bit harder to understand, harder to explain. And that is why many people search for different options how to report the results because the exponential b, the odds ratio, are really hard to understand and hard to interpret. We spent some time and I, I think I recorded a video about the, uh, the exponential b and odds ratio and how to interpret them. And here I want to show you something. First of all, we copy this table, go to Excel, and in Excel we can paste it somewhere here. Yeah, this is our table. And what we can do with this table already, we have one scalable variable and we can theoretically contribute the willingness to pay. Willingness in our event to trade income. That is actually willingness to pay. And if you remember, it is calculated by B divided by the scalable variable times minus one. And we close the brackets. And the, what it means is that they have the income reduction is in percent. How much tax reduction should you have in order to have the option? So people seem to be willing to pay one additional percent of their taxes or their income tax in order to have the option four and not to have the option one. It seems that the option one is less preferred. We now know something scalable. This is already easier to interpret. And if we want to drag and drop it, we go here and we add a dollar sign and then we can drag and drop it and see what is going to happen. So now you see the one is always income reduction because if you want to have one more percent of income reduction you have to pay one percent of income reduction. This is why this is our scalable variable. And here you see in how much people don't want to have it. So it seems that the transparency to this level is less least preferred from all these attributes. But it's not all. So first of all we can convert odds ratios into probabilities. That's why let's make it somewhere here and nice. And we add here probabilities and probabilities is the same as frequency. So how frequently will it happen if we observe something like this that they will prefer the option one or option two. 
Remember, if exponential b is equal to 1, the odds ratio equal to 1, it means a 50-50 chance. So people are indifferent, and it's like a drop of the coin, which option they will prefer. They will be indifferent. And here I found how to do it, at least a colleague of mine suggested how to convert it. Actually, it's pretty simple. If you want to convert in probabilities, you take the odds ratio and you divide it by odds ratio plus one. And we hit OK. And it is, did I do it correctly? I, I made times one, it should be plus one. Yeah, now it is correctly. So it is now 44%. So if they have this option, transparency 1, and the transparency 4 that we don't see here, because transparency 4 is somewhere here. We just add a line here, just to have... Okay, that was wrong. Let's make it one more time. Uh, here. And this, are, this is our reference value. Reference transparency 4. I'm sorry, I'm just receiving messages, turn it off. And transparency 4, no it didn't work, I turn it off, but it's still, they're still coming. Transparency 4 is an exponential b is 1, so it is a kind of, the people are, people are indifferent. So, 1. And in this event, if we drag and drop it here, so we'll have to say that actually we just can drag and drop because we make it for each value. So you see it's 50, it means 50%, so 50% chance. So probability, this is not a percentage. The, we need to multiply it by 100%, we have the percentage. So let's make it, it all times 100. Times 100. So now we have 44% and we continue and as you can see this will be like 50% chance it means 50-50. So it is 1 exponential b this reference value is equals to 1 and we have this difference. This is the first thing that we know. Now I'm going to show you some interesting things. First we go to Stata and if you go to Stata, this is this nice file here, we can open the file that we have in SPSS. It is very simple, we go to SPSS, go to File, Save As, and we save the file as... I put it on my desktop, just to have it simple. Desktop. Uh, let's create a new file that will be called temp YouTube. And you save it as the state of version, the one that you have. I have the intercooled. So that's why I save it as this one. And the data file has been saved. Now we go to Stata and we open this file. We go again to our desktop. And in desktop we find it's a good question, where did they save it? Um bam, 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 damn, YouTube. It is. Here is our file. And we have opened it if I understand correctly. We have here, as you see on the right hand side you see all the variables that we have. So now we can theoretically just do the following thing. First of all, we repeat what we have done. We type logistic. It means we will run a logistic regression. Then we take our dependent variable, final decision, and we type our independent variables. If you don't want to type them or you're afraid that you make a typo, you can just go here and just add them all here, the variables that we had, and we also add the variable that was income reduction. And hit enter. And we have the table, and look at this odds ratio, this means the exponential b value, 801766845. And if we go here, you find that these are, these values 802, so it was just rounded up, 67 six something so it was six seven seven and so on so we replicated the table here so theoretically you can run after you have restructured the file you can save it and run it in stata but that's not all we can also do the following we can run the command margins comma dy dx and then if you want to run margins analysis for all the variables you can type a star 
and hit enter and here we have the marginal means and marginal means marginal effects means that an increase in one so it means the attribute one is present will increase the likelihood of that the option is preferred by five percent so it means the one is hundred percent so zero zero five actually decreases it's minus zero five percent and this is really interesting we can copy it it's a good question how but i think you can copy the table as html if i understand correctly copy table is html we go to excel go to the next sheet i just want to show you i think copy pasting from um from spss is a bit uh, from stata is a bit painful but anyway we need this dy to dx you see they just moved the table is shifted so actually we need this values these are not standard errors these are the marginal means dy by dx so dy by dx means the change in y axis by the change in x axis if x our independent variable changes from one our y our dependent variable final decision will change for it will decrease by five percent so it's easy to interpret and we just copy these values we go to our table and let's see whether we can paste it somewhere here hopefully yeah it seems to work and this is our marginal marginal effects effects or dy through dx dx so this is already easy to interpret it means for example income reduction with reduction of income for one percent the likelihood that the option will be selected any option will be selected is almost five percent so the reduction will be more likely so the lower you pay in taxes the more you have because it's the reversely coded item this is the increase in income so decrease in income sorry it is reversely coded and here you have these numbers and now i want you to show something interesting actually what is this for a value if we know that 50 50 chance is indifferent then this probability will what if we do the following what if we do we look at the difference with this indifference 50 minus and the probability and actually see that this value is very close to this value 5 2 2 9 we have 5 4 9 9 and if we just continue we'll see how close we are you see we're very close so theoretically this marginal means at least maybe it is just a coincidence but it seems that they are just showing the difference between the unlikely indifference 50 percent and the probability will appear so maybe i'm wrong but it seems that these numbers are pretty close to the numbers that we have found here with some differences anyway this could be a first indication what you may use in order to show the marginal means so this is not a marginal mean calculation this is just a difference between the this exponential b converting probabilities as compared to 50 percent probability means coincidental change in something and this will give you already some interesting ideas about how to interpret results that you go away from exponential uh, exponential b or odds ratios you can go to willingness to trade income or willingness to pay you can convert it in probabilities and you can convert you can also look at the difference between the probability of 50 percent so 50 percent chance or you can calculate marginal effects and for this you will need stata so finally there is i think one interesting thing i want to show you and this might be a material for the next video that i might record once look at this command margins plot i clicked and something happens in the background and now we're going to see hey look at what we have here we have this marginal effects depicted and we can really see what happens on a nice graph so this is the standard error what you see here this is the marginal mean how likely it is so again zero means the people are indifferent zero percent chance that they will change and here you see that they are more likely they will neglect this option and prefer the reference category which is here unfortunately it's, it just dropped that's why it's not shown here but it would be zero and yeah and then how you see how how it looks like and probably you can also do something interesting with these graphs but that is something i might record in the next video to show you how to depict your results and how to make nicer graphs with your preferences regarding different attributes and levels i hope it was interesting and helpful and i hope that i answered some questions regarding the marginal effects what they mean 
they mean the increase in x in how much it will increase to y so much easier to interpret and also a bit about willingness to trade and also a bit about the odds ratio and their conversion into probabilities wish you all the best and i'll see you in the next video bye bye